along the way of building this, there's all kinds of things that get you excited. Some might think it's 850 horsepower <laughs> and feeling like you're Wiley e. Coyote on an old cartoon, strapping on a rocket and hold it on. <laughs> and this plane is certainly that, and that gets me excited. But there are other things about this build that got me really excited. I love the challenge of going after something that just about everyone I talked to in the industry said can't be done. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. I originally had decided I was going to put in a turbine engine, which was a 680 horsepower Pratt & Whitney for my commuter for work. I wanted to go as fast as hot rod racers on the racetrack, but without being boosted to the top. I just wanted it to purr along like it was sitting in a King Air. Right off the bat, anyone can look at it and say, yeah, obviously you need to add several feet to the front of the aircraft. Lots of things had to happen to make that work. The motor mount to handle the weight of the engine and all the leverage I would pull racing it around the country and at specific air races would be a lot of Gs. And so I had to modify all of the longerons, all of the attach points, all of the firewall, added several more motor mount locations. That meant diving into complete structure of the airframe from the firewall back, clear to the tail of the airplane and tying that wrap all the way up to the motor mount. The firewall to get the engine back far enough with such a long engine had to be completely remade and comes clear into the aircraft right up to the back of the avionics panel. So if you actually decal this, you'll see that the starter generator is through the firewall. It doesn't go through it, it's just the firewall is concave to hold the engine. It's not just bolting an engine on, it's an airframe redo, landing gear redo, CG redo, and of course the things that you can notice just by staring at, the cowlings, the intake, the induction, everything about the airframe from spinner to tail had to change to fit that motor. When I'm stewing a one-off cowling, I, I start really just with, let's get the motor on and in location and in CG first. I actually buy a whole bunch of like aluminum yardsticks, and I know that sounds funny, but they bend so easy, and I can put a couple rivets on the airplane and then start bending them and pushing a bubble out of them or tightening them in, and I use a mountain of duct tape and a zillion yardsticks, and I overlap them, and I tape them, and then I go, oh, I need it wider, this, that, the other. By the time I'm done, I got wood, and I got yardsticks, I got foam, I got spray foam, I got all kinds of things, and I stand back, and, and I either love it or I hate it, or somewhere in between, and if I don't absolutely love it, I tear it all off and do it again, or bulge it up, and it's fun. I, the start of a cowling is bits and pieces of cardboard and rulers around the shop until it works on the engineering side and then works cosmetically. We're getting there. We got about 10 billion hours left of sanding to do. <laughs> All right, so it's been a long couple of weeks. This is a one of a kind cowling. It was a lot of work. There's a whole bunch of mini molds on molds. We literally built the whole cowling right on the engine and worked our way outward with all kinds of stuff. But we finally got there. We're ready to cut it off and uh, hopefully it works out good. So let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> it's the hardest part, it's one off parts, but it is <laughs> so much fun. Along the way, you're always going to have setbacks. Well, Turbulence certainly had a couple of those. Fuel was 
absolutely one of those challenges. How to get an airplane that was designed to hold 62 gallons to hold 150 gallons. Get something that could normally fly three to 500 miles and make it go 1,200 miles on an engine that's burning significantly more fuel per hour. To get the fuel and turbulence, I had to find every single open space and then create open spaces. Like there used to be speed brakes on legacies that flip up, but it took almost a gallon per break and it went down into the fuel base. So that had to go, I needed that gallon. And that may sound crazy when you're trying to get to 150, but I had to steal it from there. The forward D section of the wing, where the two parts of the wings bolted together, I needed to change that to a single piece to get the strength I wanted out of the wing for the speeds it would do. But I also wanted that bay for fuel. So there's fuel added to the bays on both sides, fuel added to the original wing. Then the wing tips became fuel going out to the side. Then behind the seat became fuel. And then down under the legs and belly became fuel. To take a plane that maxed out with 62 gallons to 150, that is a lot of area. And to, <laughs> to put it into perspective, look at a 55 gallon water drum. They're that big. And look at how tiny this plane is. <laughs> you think of a 55 gallon water drum, it's like almost the size of this whole part of the plane. And I needed to get two of those into these little tiny wings. And so, um, it was a challenge. <laughs> Every single available space got reinforced, carbon fibered, connected, and redundancy added, and I got the fuel in it. For the added weight of the fuel, I needed to beef up all kinds of things, spars being one of them. But it actually, when I was looking at how much weight the wings themselves could hold, more fuel in a wing doesn't normally mean adding more strength to a spar. When the fuel's in the wing and you hit bumps, usually it's too much weight in the airplane and no weight in the wing, and the mass moment in the fuselage bounces and moves heavy, and the wings being light or out of fuel is where the stress is. It's the imbalance of heavy fuselage with people in the plane and lightweight wings. So adding the fuel in the wings was partially one of the reasons I wanted to add more strength, but it was really about the speeds it would be capable of and the amount of weight I wanted to be able to carry in the plane with a new fuel tank in the back, not so much the wing's weight. It's the crack of the wing going through the bump at 28,000 feet that is the bigger concern about the wing. Pulling a hard G in a race and having that needle pegged and then hitting someone else's wake and bouncing through it. That's where the wing reinforcement really came in, is the, the amount of weight I could carry, but that weight at 385 knots instead of 230 knots. That is a big delta, and that's where the reinforcement of the wings had to come in. It doesn't look like much, but those three little dots on each side are my landing lights. They're sanded smooth right with the paint, and I have zero drag, so I've never seen it done before. I just got this wild idea jumped online, bought some fiber optics, put it up to some really bright lights. And gosh, what do you know it worked? And <laughs> so it's kind of fun. Teeny bit more weight, but when it comes to speed, there's zero drag. It's absolutely flushed and polished into the wing paint. On avionics of turbulence, I, I had an idea all the way from the start how I wanted it. I had this beautiful garment panel picked out, all touch screens. I wanted as much glass as possible. And as I started doing the panel and researching more and more and the capabilities that were out there, I started to realize there were features that Garmin offered that I'd never seen in a plane before. And, and those little things you don't really realize you're gonna do until you start learning all the features that some of the new systems have. And Turbulence has lots of fun features. For example, I can have a complete failure on a fuel delivery of a wing and a completely independent system and fuel line can be activated to move the fuel from wing to wing. Every piece of information I need to know about my plane is there, whether it's going right or going wrong. I have every possible fuel movement, fuel pump, whether the pressure faded on a fuel pump, anything that you may not notice just flying, everything feels great. I was able to add more pressure sending units and probes and optics into the system that would tell me 
if something's changing out of the norm and, and throw up a warning. And I had never flown even any of my certified planes that could do some of those features. So experimental aircraft, you know, that's what the FAA made experimental optional for guys like me to say, let's try something different. Let innovators like Garmin add optional inputs for whatever a knucklehead like me can come up with. And Turbulence ended up getting all kinds of things like that in it. And some of the other things I did just because of those interfaces was simple things like a backup camera on the, the back of the plane. There's a little fin that holds one of the antennas and I didn't want to lose the aerodynamic drag. Anytime you have an antenna, you get drag. So inside that same section, I added a camera and so I'm sharing the same drag surface I have to have for an antenna with a camera. And it may sound crazy to have a backup camera in a plane because how often are you going to back up? Well, I actually back up all the time in this plane. I turn it around and back it into stalls quite often so I don't have to push it. And I use the camera for that. But I also use it in flight, um, formation flights with my friends, in air racing, just keeping an eye on what's going on around me. Um, I flip a switch and it shows up on one of the Garmin screens. I have everything, big, full size, what's behind me uh, on the ground and in the air. And I can flip another switch and change it to forward looking vision. I'll be curious if anyone watching has noticed one wing's one color and the other's a completely different color. A lot of people look at the plane and they go, that's a pretty cool orange, silver, and black plane. And then it's not until I point out that one side's completely silver and one's orange and they kind of cross and the paint twists around the plane. So if you look on this side of the plane, it looks like an orange plane with some silver and black. And on the other side, it's not an orange plane. It's completely reversed. I didn't come up with that design. I like to get involved with colleges and schools. I've been speaking at a variety of colleges, aviation programs for a lot of years. I got this crazy idea. I thought, you know what, maybe an aerospace department or a design department at a school could come up with a cooler paint job than I can sneak up in my head. And so I put out a little contest and a little scholarship and some cash and put it out there to the world. And I got all kinds of great ideas. And when I saw this paint scheme show up from a girl out of a local community college, and it had two wings that were completely different colors and the paint rolled through the aircraft, uh, that was it. I was excited to be able to give her a check and have her be part of Turbulence's paint job. So it's actually my favorite paint job I've ever done. So I, I kind of mimic it on some other builds. I like to twist things up a little bit, but that was someone else's idea and I love it. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs>